So here's the AGH Synth Mini Mod system. We've got a full Dark Edition system in that top row and the first original Silver Plate Edition in the bottom row. These electrically and in terms of functions are exactly the same, they're just cosmetically different. If you want that original Dark Mood look on the top or the original Mini Mod look created by AGH Synth below, it's your choice. You can obviously mix and match these within the Yaro Rack format as well. So let's build up a basic subtractive patch and remind ourselves or teach ourselves what subtractive synthesis is and what that mini moves based around as well, what sort of functions and signal path that's got and how we can replicate that on the mini mod. So this black cable is my output. We can take an output straight from an oscillator. Got the four wave shapes, shark tooth, saw, triangle, and square, which has got pulse width modulation as well. So we're going to use red cables for our audio path and we're going to take a square wave into the first input on the filter. We get volume control that can drive that filter really nicely. We've got cut off on the filter and resonance control. Now we've got three inputs on that filter and that's where the mixing happens within this system. So let's plug the other three oscillators in. We've got a nice rich thick mix of waves that we can filter. We want to actually start controlling this. So I'm going to use the glide and noise module to process our pitch. Plugging that in on the blue cable to the CV in on there, we can then chain this passively with a passive multiple or stackable cables right across this system for our vault per octave. So now, this will all track the pitch apple on the keyboard. that I've plugged that vault per octave into the filter as well so we can actually get this key tracking. So if I was to find a new wave shape, it's a nice resonant wave, and I didn't have that filter tracking, that's just a static filtering, almost like a static EQ on those waves. With that actually tracking pitch, and this is a feature on the original mini move as well. wave shape changes and follows that as well. Now, all this is static so far, so we're going to want something else to actually start to control this. And we can take the gate output of our CV converter or synth that's got CV out and use that with each new note to trigger those envelopes. And you can see that green LED. And you can see that green LED on those contour generators lighting up. So to show where our envelopes are going, let's use these yellow cables. We're going to plug these into the frequency CV in of the filter. Turn the filter down. We've got a frequency CV amount. We've got attack, nice slow fade, nice punch. We've got decay control, nice and tight and punchy, and a sustain amount which will stay high as the key is held. Turn that down. Even though I'm still holding the key, we're not sustaining the envelope anymore. And just like the original Minimoog envelopes, we can have an attack, decay, sustain, decay. And that second decay acts like a release. Without this plugged in, as soon as I let go of a key, regardless of decay level, that's going to cut off. If I flick that to be in, that'll act like a release time as well as our decay time. So just a short hit of a key gives us that full, long, full decay and release. The next thing we need to do is get this into a VCA, which is a voltage controlled amplifier that's going to control the overall level of our sound. So let's take our output from the VCA. 
we're going to use the second envelope into the CV input. And as red cables are our audio path, let's take the output of the filter into audio one on the VCA. We've got audio one turned up, our volumes turned up. Using the offset, you can hear that. Or using the envelope, you can hear that too. Let's set full sustain on our VCA envelope. A slight bit of release. And then we're going to back our filter off and create a shorter, punchier envelope. So I've got exactly the same signal paths up here, except I've removed the first oscillator, which is our third input on the filter. I'm just using two square waves tuned a little lower to play a sequence. Turn up the filter, you can hear these square waves. And I'm still going through that VCA with an envelope control to open it as opposed to it staying wide open. I'm going to remove one of these oscillators from the mixer on the filter. You're just listening to that oscillator, single oscillator patch now. We've got PWM shape on that square. You might be thinking we've run out of modulation sources, but a common trick was to use the third oscillator on the Minimoog as an LFO. And we've got a low mode on this octave switch. I'm gonna switch this down. I'm gonna take the triangle out. Into PWM. And turn the CV up. You can now hear again that modulated PWM. I've got static PWM shape as well. And that from a single oscillator gives us a wider sort of detuned sound. And I'm going to use a stackable to mult this PWM CV into the second oscillator as well. So it's going to take a copy of the signal, put that to one oscillator and into the next. So then turning that oscillator up. A nice rich wide sound, turn the filter down. Now instead of PWM we could use this LFO to modulate the filter as well. So let's take this out of our oscillators, unpatch the envelope from the filter, patch this oscillator acting as an LFO to the frequency in on the filter. can use the square wave output to actually sync the oscillator that we're listening to. Tune this oscillator up higher. And this is the syncing oscillator. And a lot of extra overtones in there. Slightly more modern sound with those extra overtones. So at the minute I've got a sawtooth from a single oscillator going into the filter. That's then going into the VCA which is controlled by an envelope. Very simple patch. Thinking a little bit more outside the box and beyond these sort of basic subtractive sounds, we can start to look at the noise that's available in many subtractive sims, both software, hardware, modular or otherwise, to modulate different parts of a patch. A nice addition with this Minimod system is red noise, which is a lower audio range noise that's great as a modulation source. So turning up this filter, I'm going to take the red noise into the frequency control of that cutoff for the filter. I make the filter more resonant. 
You can hear that random quality of this red noise ragging the sort of filter all over the place. We can control that by turning down the frequency CV amount. One place this also excels is as a PWM modulator. So instead of a saw wave, I'm going to take a square wave out into this filter. This is what it sounds like. We'll leave that wide open and take this red noise into the PWM CV. So because this isn't cyclic and repeatable like an LFO, like when we use that third oscillator as a triangle LFO, we get this sort of random and unstable quality. Modulating the filters cut off with our envelope. Gives the impression that there's a lot more going on than a single oscillator. We can now go into the linear FM of the oscillator. You can hear that change in that tuning, it's a bit wobbly and moving around. If you want something a bit more extreme, you can use the exponential CV in. Which is a great way to actually check out what this is doing, and you can actually hear these voltages firing the tune in that oscillator up and down. Sticking with something a bit more tame in the linear input. Turning down this filter again so the notes have a shorter feel. With the envelope modulation. We've got this great wonky, unstable sort of sound. And with all the attenuators, we can take this from having no effect to a large effect. In between, which is a lot more musically useful when you want to just get some instability into your sound. Now, rather than using this specific red noise, which is meant as a CV modulation choss, we can use the white noise or the pink noise. So, here's the white noise. So, in less of an effect there, into the exponential CV. Lots of strange overtones. Let's turn that filter down. So we're into a different sonic territory now. Removing the envelope from our filter, let's put this white noise into the filter's cutoff control. You can hear this noise is sort of pushing through almost as an audio source for the filter. great in a lot of productions where you're wanting this sort of old vintage sort of sound where there might have been a noisy power supply, some noise in the recording chain, some tape hiss and just some non-clean sort of non-clinical sort of sound. Let's go from white noise to pink noise. You can hear that slightly different to the white. Again let's check that in the tuning of our oscillator. Let's turn the patch into some sort of effects noise drone. Let's try it in the linear CV in. Attenuating that again is great for an instable oscillator sound. Try that in the PWM of that saw wave. Nice aggressive sound, it's going to look great into that filter. Let's tune this down an octave. Change the noise from pink to white. couple of ways to start using noise maybe a little bit differently to some basics that you might be using in a subtractive patch. 
So I've got a saw with, playing a nice little octave sequence, going into the filter. The filter's got an envelope that we're going to use later on that's currently not plugged in, and we've got the other envelope controlling our VCA, which is taking our filter's output. So oscillator to filter, filter to VCA. <laughs> That lovely, rich, analog, creamy, moog ladder filter sound on that saw wave. Now let's take our oscillator, in this case the one on the top left. This is a triangle output, but we're up at audio rate, not LFO rates, but I'm going to use this as a modulation source for the filter. So turn in the CV input down for the filter. Let's take that in. Turn that up. And as I sweep the tuning of this oscillator, it's octaves. All these different colours and overtones come out. Sweeping the cutoff, we get these different formant style dubstep vowel type sounds. Let's play with the tune and the oscillator again. the envelope in to one of the other CV inputs on the filter. Adjust the depth for modulation from the oscillator. Normal when it's off. A little more full on when it's not. Now if I take the next available oscillator, put them to LFO mode and sweep the tuning of our audio rate modulator with that. Let's get all sorts of really cool glitchy sounds coming out. Now at lower CV modulation depths, these become a little bit more useful for sort of everyday use. And here we're there, we're just getting this extra sort of glitchy top end on that filter. Larger depths of modulation. Might not be something for your everyday bass line, but it's certainly a cool technique for pulling a lot of different sounds out. So that's audio rate modulation of the cutoff on that filter. Okay, so we've looked at audio rate filter FM. Let's look at audio rate FM of these oscillators. Currently got a really simple patch with a triangle wave going into our VCA, single envelope controlling the VCA, and that's it. Now, using the oscillator next to it, I'm going to take a triangle wave and patch that into the linear CV input on this oscillator. Playing with the depth of modulation from nothing to full and the tuning of this FM source. We can get some nice FM tones, whether they're more musical and harmonious or more abrasive and more aggressive. Now some of these notes sound different to others, and that's because this oscillator is completely static while this one is tracking pitch. So if I copy my volt per octave signal, these tuning ratios are locked, and this is staying the same and each note's got that same tone. I drop in the tuning of the oscillator we're listening to. start to play around and get different tones. But rather than this more subtle linear response to this signal, let's go into the exponential input, turn up the depth, much more extreme. Play around with the tune of the FM source. Sharpen up our envelope to the VCA.
We've got some nice tones, and depending on which wave you use, we'll get different sounds. That's a triangle for the modulator. Here's a square. A saw. I'm going back to a triangle. Different outputs for what we're listening to will sound different. So here's going from a triangle to a square. Quite aggressive, and a saw. stick with a saw. I'm actually going to sync this oscillator as well, so I'm going to take the square into the sync key, tune this one up. Lots of abrasive, aggressive harmonics. Going back to a standard triangle, Push things further if you use the output of the filter with the resonance turned up full. We'll go into the linear CV. And this filter is self oscillating, so as I turn that cut off down, get a nice soft, much cleaner FM because it's a nice clean sign from that resonating filter as opposed to a triangle, saw square, or sharp tooth from the oscillators. Now going in the exponential FM. This is static again. So let's get our pitch control into the filter. Much cleaner, much softer, and a great trick for getting some smoother FM tones. Now taking this from the square out, syncing this to another oscillator, we've got some pretty aggressive and nasty tones. And I'd like to filter that, but I'm using the filter as a self oscillation source for a nice clean sign to FM this. But as this is modular, I can take this straight into another filter. And instead of coming out of the VCA, come from the VCA into the filter. So let's use some of the other ideas off to finish the video. We're going to use the red noise to modulate this filter. And use the pink noise. Is an audio source. Turning down our patch, this is the noise. You can hear that red noise ragging that filter around. Gonna use an oscillator, triangle wave down at LFO rate to modulate the PWM. Moving this up to audio rate, let's do audio rate PWM. Turn the noise down, open this filter. You can push this much further into something more abstract, more random, and much more extreme in use. Or as we've shown through the video, back these off for much subtler modulations, and just slightly different modulations, be that of audio rate or a random source, to just push things beyond basic subtractive synthesis.